Hello dear students, welcome in this online session of live lecture 10th standard. Now today we are completing some of the poems which are remaining to teach you. <clears throat> so in this section we will be focusing on some of the beautiful poem as you can see beside uh, behind me that these poems are actually taken from a textbook first flight and these poems are equally different from each other so they will give a different class of theory they'll also give give you a different theory uh, of the taste also and also they will try to make you understand about the relative fact in all these theories of the poem and also you learn about that how nicely these poems are designed just to make you aware understand some of the concept some of the memories and the basic thing which is actually lasting long in your lifetime in your lifetime and also in your upcoming days to here so the first poem which we are going to focus today is the ball poem now you might be thinking what is the ball poem see my dear student this ball poem is a story a poem not a story but a poem uh, by a person who is actually sharing his experience that how beautifully the life is connected with some of the object some of the phrases and some of the emotions too here in which a boy is actually in this poem is losing the ball means a boy loses the ball the cost of the ball is not more neither it's not like he can buy that ball but it is actually Okay, where he is attaching his emotions towards that and that's how this poem is also dealing out with the general theory of the poem the boy now the ball of the boy or you can say the ball poem is related with the person whose name is John Berman he is actually giving you the concept of the theory where you will understand the feeling the emotion and the basic connection of a boy towards his toy or you can say object also so what is the boy now the question is that the first question in the poem itself like not a question but it is actually the first time is dealing with that okay what is the boy now who has lost his ball who has lost the ball while he was playing then what what is he to do now what he will do will he get this ball back or not i saw it go someone says that yeah i saw the ball just went throughout the grasses and merely bouncing down the streets and merely bouncing down the streets so he's telling that it was bouncing down the streets went along with the speed like the water is flowing from the mountain so no use of say oh there are the other balls there is no use we can say we have we will found we'll find some other balls also an ultimate grief of the pain can be seen out with the boy when you know sometimes we relate with the object and we need that same object only we don't replace our emotions our feeling our emotions with the other object so the comfortness and the attachment which we feel is related with one or a limited object only and that's how this poem is all about so no use to say other than we'll buy the balls here oh the boy don't you worry about the balls no use of that and ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy ultimate shaking grief means what the boy is actually feeling somehow fear about the ball why as he stands rigid tremble standing down he is just standing rigid he is saying no I, i just need my ball i just need my uh, uh, play ball and he is just focusing down he is just focusing down means he is staring down he is looking down to get his ball all his young days into the harbor where he has actually made his days to be uh, passed with the harbor harbor means where the boats or where the uh, somehow the uh, trading business is carried out along with the water areas and all so that can be said as the harbor so that's how he's selling that ki all the all his young days into the harbor where his ball went he is actually wasting his days to the harbor actually ball went inside the water or near the harbor so it is not found right now till now it is it has not been found so the boy is worrying i would not intrude on that i will not interfere in that the author says that don't worry i'll not interfere in that but let me ask you he senses the first responsibility of that which is worthless so he is sensing that ki a, a dime a feeling a, con, a conception in his own mind is coming out here and i would not into do you i will not interrupt you i will not disturb you but let me help you out he sense his responsibility has been gone it is silly it is feeling that ki like ball has lost from his hand and now the boy is actually 
thinking that it was my responsibility and I should grab that ball, I should keep that ball. Balls, balls, balls will be lost always, little boy. I'm trying to con convince him that don't worry, balls will be lost always, we'll find the new one. He is learning, well behind it, the spirit eyes is turning to search the balls only. Still he is learning but still his eyes are desperate, desperate means eager to get the ball, eager to search the ball. So still his eyes are desperate to search the ball, still he is searching here and there near the harbour. The astrology, his own feeling of the in internal, uh, you can say like emotions are relating with his own uh, general theory and he is thinking that how I can get that ball. So the astronomy of the losing the ball makes him feel sorrow inside must have he be learning about that one day he will be actually going through this process when he will lose his ball and that's why how to stand up knowing with every every time how to stand up he is just trying how to get up from this problem and most of you know many days here how to stand up that is how to manage with these kinds of problems see my dear student in this though in this poem the author the john brahman has given you the very best emotional touch that whenever you lose some kinds of thing you can get replacement of that thing ha huh, it is right that the replacement cannot be fixing your same comfortness with that material like you are feeling good with that another material the next material will be not giving you the same comfort and you will still miss that material but the main factor is that what you need to learn in the story in this poem is that you need to come closer to face that challenges and you need to also stand with your own hands or with your own emotion you have to stand with that so that you can be separated from the feelings where you are always regretting yourself so this is all the stage of life where whatever we lose is the story needs to go on, we need to keep on, we need to move on. It's not like one thing has gone from the life, the life is over. It's not like that. So we need to go on as much we are breathing daily, that much we need to wish also daily for the new life. So don't break your emotions, be staying together with your emotion, courage, focus, determination and conceptualize your feeling, channelize your feeling and move on. So the last line says that the boy is worrying how to stand up, how to stand and knowing where the man must one day know, man must one day know and most of the men they should know in many days that how to stand up, how to stand up means you need to move on from this line here. So this was one poem which is also known as the ball poem. Now you might be having some kinds of habits, eating of the nails, sometime biting on that scratching on the hair, making sound with the objects, okay, or eating chewing gums, blah, blah, blah. There are lots of things which we need to improve well. So since now I'm moving to the second poem, that is the Amanda, okay. First we completed, now let's move to the Amanda. Who is Amanda? Amanda is a little girl who is actually thinking that why all the kids are controlled? Why all the kids are tortured? But actually kids are not tortured, they are just guided well from the parents, from their elders and also from the teachers. So Amanda thinks that this should not be happening, it's a stop out, I should be living my life very easily as I wish. So that is the poem all about Amanda. I hope in the poem ball uh, you might have understood what is the feeling and what we need to do in the life. But now let's start the second poem that is the Amanda and it is the poem of a child who is actually trying to tell something to her parents by the help of poem that what she needs to do in the life. So that's the poem Amanda. And this poem will also make you understand what are the differences between good habits and the bad habits too here. So every child is feeling that he or she is actually controlled in the home or also instructed not to do some kinds of couple of things or the bunch of things too here. And also one another thing which is actually not relating with each other should be also avoided by the students or the child at the home or the kids also. So it is actually the thought of Amanda. You might have also felt my dear student, the freedom is curtailed when we are child, when we are in our childhood. Curtail means the freedom is trimmed off and you are getting very less amount of freedom. Why you are driving bicycle here, why you are eating chewing gums, wrapper eating is not good enough, wafers will make you health, uh, sick enough, don't run in the room, uh, rain, don't go and play outside, 
hey why are you making sound eat properly these kinds of things are there which are making the kids to feel that their uh, liberty is a basic thing which is not given to them so you can also write down your own imaginations into your own wishes what is happening with you how your parents are dealing with you that all the things you can be writing here so focusing on the poem that is amanda says that okay, some of the commands see this stanza of the poem is actually written inside the commandative way commandative way means it is a, like i will be reading this stanza and you will only get the information like i'm just giving you a command let me show you one of the example i'll start the first stanza and i'll explain you also don't bite your nail amanda don't hunch on your shoulders amanda stop scouching and just sit straight amanda the first line itself the paragraph itself says that the stanza says that don't bite your nails hey sit properly hey don't bite parents are always making you to guide but the way of guiding is can be making you to understand that your unity is curtailed that is the problem second says that there is a there is a ligament enabled there is a uh, like guide enabled sea that is whole inhabiting in a, inside the like a mermaid and also drifting blissfully amanda is saying that it's like there there is a there is a part of the sea where the mermaids are there mermaids means what the uh, we can call like the fish uh, which are like half human and the half fish they can be half girl half fish so that's how did you finish did you generally finish your homework amanda again the question is that have you finished your homework amanda did you finish your homework amanda did you actually went to your room you cleaned your room your room is untidy you need to make it tidy also amanda i thought i told you you clean your shoes amanda again the parents are asking hey have you kept your clothes very properly have you bunched your clothes well have you polished your shoes what about your homework when the test paper is coming out what about the examination hey have you watched the video lectures and all these kinds of questions can be curtailing your freedom according to you as if you are a child then therefore i am an orphan roaming the streets first of all says tell that i am just like a mermaid which is not crossing the sea that bushes and bushes are there i need to go in the sea second line she says that ki i am actually an orphan roaming in the streets and also i patted soft dust with my hushed hands and also my bare feet and the silence of the garden the golden garden the golden and also the freedom is very very much sweet this is telling that i just feel like an orphan now no loving parents are there with me i'm always running with the streets nobody cares about me my feet are bare the dust is there i sweep my hand again i feel the same so that's how amanda is saying that i am feeling very bored with these kinds of parents but actually amanda is guided by the parents here now don't eat the chocolates amanda again she's telling that the parents will be called don't eat the chocolates amanda remember you are actually having the acne and all you can be having some aches and all it can be paining in your gums muscle problem amanda will you please look at me when i am actually spelling something to you i'm speaking something to you i'm telling something to you amanda why you ignore me just look at me don't eat chocolates don't eat chocolates and all it will make you teeth fill of the cavity so this poem is making you to understand that how nicely one of the one of the pair of the lifestyle is related with the stanza where you are targeting some of the parents who are always ready to curtail some of the uh, liberty from the kids or from the their own words also and then she says that she thinks that i am rapunzel you know the rapunzel rapunzel is a character of a comic story where rapunzel is having a long hair i am a rapunzel i have no care life in the tower i am quarantined inside like i am just trying to inside i am feeling like a rapunzel i am not getting outside i have just locked inside the tower like in the same cartoon the rapunzel was locked inside the tower to save from the you remember to save from the giant and also i'll certainly never let it do and with the bright hairs i will also somehow try to get out of this hall means with my bright ideas one day i will run from here nobody will be there for to stop me again she is thinking again the parent is telling stop amanda amanda stop that sculling at once amanda don't scull at once don't just think on that level and you are always nobody amanda you know you are just like moody you are no one but you are moody always you are moody whenever the work is there you will do whenever moody is there you will follow 
or whenever your mood is out you will just sit like a dumb girl so anyone would think that i nagged at you amanda am i talking to you am i telling you something am i making you to understand amanda anybody will tell that i am actually nagging about you amanda you can focus me amanda but you don't focus me but you don't focus me or you never focuses me so that's how we can say this poem is all related to your lifestyle and we all are relating to that same then that same kind of childhood days where our parents used to stop us to do some kinds of things before we do so therefore this poem is also relating with the same concept of the amanda where every child feels that their controlled and their identity their liberty their freedom is curtailed parents are there to guide you you should not wish your parents are uh, somehow like ring master and you are the animals inside the ring no it's not like that your parents are actually very lovable uh, part of your life lovable people of your life lovable person of your life and they always wish good for you that's how they scold you so you should take their all the scold into the positive way that's how you can go and you can make your future bright so moving to the next poem the last poem of this lecture that is the animals okay which is also given by walt white man you can see this name here that is the walt white man now what are the animals my dear students see generally if you talk about this poem the poem the third you will get the information related to the animals where the animals are actually telling you some kinds of thing the poet tells us that he feels more at home with the animals than to the human so sometimes what is happening animals are those who are actually relating with her life and also animals are the uh, you can say living buddies which are always giving us comfort and it is better to love an animal than to love a human being because it is, it is says that it is said that whenever you actually feed a dog or any animal for 3 days he will remember you for 3 years but you feed 3 years for a human being he will forget you in 3 days and that's a bitter truth i know this truth will be pinching us you and me also but it is right human can be cheating with us animals are not like that that's how i think that the poet is telling that is uh, mr white man the walt white man is telling that okay, in the poem animals the poet tells us that he feels more at home with animals than the humans and he is always feeling comfortable with the animal so this is first flight and this is the textbook of 10th standard where we are going to start the last but not the least that is the poem animals here now my dear student you can focus this poem describing you the ascatsy and also the beautiful manner of the nature and the human being too here so the poem starts with the first stanza where the poet is thinking and i'll narrate that line i'll read that line you need to focus with me and you need to also go with the pages of the lesson i think i could turn them live uh, I could I, I just think that I could turn and live with the animals they are so placed self-confidence and also they are somehow self-contained too I stand and look inside the eyes of them long and long I stand and look at them long and long they just feel to make a connection in me so whenever whenever Walt white man is relating himself to see the animals he's lost in their eyes He's always feeling a connection between him and them. Also, he says that they do not sweat generally and why they do not sweat and whine and about the conditions also. They're always ready to fight. They're always ready to go on. They're always ready to uh, just move on. They do not be awake in the dark and also weep their sins. They do not make any kind of bad things so that they need to weep. They do not drink, they do not go for the generally bad things. They are the innocent animals. They do not make me sick. Always I find so energetic with the animals. They do not make me sick. Disgusting with the duty of the court. Sometimes they do not make me sick. They do not make me sick with their duty of the court. They do not relate me with the work which I don't want to do that. No one dissatisfies me likewise. No one is like disdefiled. In the case of the animals no one is dominated with that and somehow a mania owning the things a mania owning things means sometime i am just owning the animals animals are owning me we both connect our soul and also we are actually meeting with the general purpose where animals are showing their love towards me not one kneels to another he's also telling another line okay not one keen 
to another to another nor his kind of that neither animals are so selfish nor they are so wishable and also they are living for the thousands and thousands they are since from the thousands and thousands of the years not one respectable sometime we won't we won't find any kind of respect in them and sometime we are not happy also but sometime they are not they are not unhappy they are always happy they are not the, like the humans who are crying for their pain who are crying for their wish who are dying for their dream but they are not like the same on the whole earth the animals are happy so they slow generally down with their lifestyle they show their feelings they realize to me they show the relaxation also the relation with me and also i accept i expect them in my life and whenever i meet this kinds of animal i feel comfortable you need to understand whenever we are attached with the animals we are actually attached with the feeling of the animals we are actually attached with their emotions and animals are loving us without any kind of conditions so that's how they bring me to the tokens of myself and that is the envies also they plainly in the position they meet me and they go so i wonder where they go where they get those tokens and all sometime whenever these animals are coming uh, they just give me some kind of happiness so from where they are bringing i did not know so did i pass that way huge ago of the animals relative factor did i pass away with the huge relative times to go with the uh, generally negligibility drop them should i leave them or should i go with them so that's how we can say that the animal poem is relating with the nature and also his finding that okay how real world is different with the false world how false human beings are somehow we can say complicated but the animals are not like that so somehow we need to feel comfortable with the animals this whole of the poem animal is also relating the same factor where the author white man that is Walt Whiteman is relating with his factor of the love towards the animal. So this lessons, this poem, uh, this three of the poems were relating with the fact of different different stories and theories and all. I hope you enjoyed the poem and all. And for the more, you can also go with the figures of speech in the exam from the poem. See my dear student, figures of speech are designed from the poem only, and the unseen. para or unseen poems are also there they can be also related with this kinds of poems so you must read on you must get the grammatical sections clear from the specially poem so we'll see you in some other fresh new lectures till then you can take care jai hind